This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so let's get started. So I, I, I hope everybody went through these questions at least once. So basically offline you have to go through these questions and then you should come here and you should understand the answers part of it. So before I go to the questions, I'll just give you a couple of things when before you write any certification, not only PEGA certification. So the intention of certification, why companies uh, give certification processes because they wanted to analyze, they wanted to analyze candidates, uh, whether he's up to the mark or not. So, you know, in PEGA, there are three types of certifications. One is CSA, next one is CSSA and CLSA. So there are three levels of certifications. So you can uh, you can assume that basic level certification and intermediate and advanced level certifications. So the one which we are seeing, right? So this is a basic level certification, though it is a basic level certification. So do not underestimate this. So it is very tough. It is very, very tough if you do not prepare it accordingly. If you do not prepare for certification, so it looks complex for you. All right. So now currently, so it is 8.1 version. Currently, the certification which is supported by Pega Systems is 8.1. Pega 8.1 is the version. So these are a few sample of questions. A few sample of questions which I got it from uh, Google and Internet search itself. So, so these are basically uh, real dumps. All right. So don't think that these questions will come into your exam. No, it is not for that purpose. So the intention and the purpose of this entire session is to understand more about certification part, how to prepare for certification and what is the right path, how to get into certification. So what are all the things that you need to be aware of before you start preparing yourself? So this is the intention of this course. It's not like providing you dumps or something like that. Okay, so this is, these questions will help you how the questions are being asked in the certification. So there are totally 60 questions. So a couple of questions may repeat, maybe four to five questions may repeat in your actual exam also. So, but this certification, if you go through these questions, it doesn't mean that you have prepared completely. No, it's not like that. Okay. And a couple of other things that you have to remember before you start preparation itself. Okay. So when you are doing this uh, preparation, right? So you need to prepare in a different way. It's not like that if you say, for example, you have got five years of experience in on Pega. Assume that. So you are working on Pega. So you didn't prepare anything and you directly went to exam. So do you think that he'll clear the exam? No, it is not possible. I've seen a number of students who has real time experience, more than five, 10 years of experience, but still sometimes they may fail. Not sometimes, most of the times they'll fail. Because so certification requires a certain level of preparation. Right? Though you have real time experience, it doesn't mean that you will clear the exam easily. No, no, it's not like that. So the preparation for certification is different and the real time experience is different and the preparation for interviews is a different thing. These three are three different things. Though you are working on Pega, the same tool, but if you prepare for interviews, you need to prepare it in a different way. If you prepare for certification, it's a different way. And if you if you wanted to get a real time experience, that is a different way. Okay, so don't club these three things in single box and assume that everything is same. No. So anyways, we'll understand if you see the questions, right? We'll understand. We'll come to know how these questions are framed. So if you look back uh, previous versions like 7.1, 7.2, 7.4, 8.1, See what Pega has done was so earlier they used to ask direct questions. Example, so out of pattern inheritances versus the direct inheritance, so which is given the priority. This is this is a direct question. Okay, so now they are not all they are not going to ask these kind of questions. The same question they are giving a scenario, business scenario, and they are trying to get the answers from you. So the way the questions are framed was completely changed from version to version, version to version. If you see 7.4 version questions and 8.1 questions, right? So there is a complete change. And if you look back to 7.1 questions versus 
so completely it is changing so earlier if you take 7.1 so that was 70 uh, percent is the uh, certification pass if you wanted to get certified on on 7.1 it used to be 70 percent now it is somewhere around 65 percent because they have increased the complexity of the questions okay so you know the source for all these uh, things right so it is pdn.pega.com so if you wanted to prepare for certification you have to go to pdn.pega.com register yourself and you will get the course content if you are looking for 8.1 csa so you'll get the course and from the course you'll have videos you'll have the content you'll have exercise questions okay so all these things you have to practice so the questions the way the questions are framed right so they are from the topics that they are given that, that they have given in the pdn only so they have list of topics so the questions that are framed will be only from those topics they'll not go beyond that that thing is guaranteed and one more thing is so here the question as the questions are asked via scenarios right they are giving a business scenario and they are trying to give a couple of options and they're trying to analyze you so here the problem here is if you look at if you look at the question and if you look at the answers so out of four options you think that one or two options straight away you can reject them but there would be a couple of options to come I in one or two options which are very close to the answer okay so the, the answers the options right they look like they are close to the answers so now it is your skill so how to decide the best option out of those two things it is not a direct question and answer kind of thing it is something like you have to analyze the scenario try to understand and go through the options which one will suit the scenario best that option that you have to pick okay, so these are few couple of things that you need to understand and before uh, during your preparation right so after each and every topic in pdn so there are some exercise questions so you have to go through the exercise questions and also there are they have given some practice scenarios also you have to practice them so the way the questions are framed you know they have a database of questions so if 10 people go to an examination so they'll get different questions because there are repository of questions there are a huge number of questions which are already there in the database so randomly it will pick for the students so you should understand that from a single topic they are framing multiple number of questions which means that every corner scenario of that particular topic they are going to cover okay so you don't know which question you might get so for that reason you have to prepare completely completely in the sense each and every sentence in the pdn that they are providing right so they can frame a question and they can ask you so you should be aware of all these things so that level of preparation that you need to prepare for before going to the certification and before you go for certification there are practice uh, exams there are practice exams online you will find it and also in pdn also there is a practice exam so check yourself before you go for certification check yourself and take that practice exam and that will ensure you where you are in preparation levels where are you it will give you some idea okay. so any other things that you are facing or any things that you wanted to do immediately you wanted to certification so just let me know i'll i'll provide you some other options also all right any questions before we actually start the actual questions from the document i hope i covered most of the things Hello. No. Okay. So let's get started. So the first question is question one. I'll repeat it with Pega situations layer cake approach. So Pega situation layer cake approach. How do you configure a regional variation for human resource time of cases? So there is an application called as HR application in the human resource. So there is a time of cases. So there is a case and that application is HR and they wanted to configure a regional variation in the sense. So this time of cases application case or application. So it differs from different regions. Right. So say, for example, in India, it might be different regional variation. 
so in other other place it might be different something like that all right so how do you configure that is the question see the question that was asked is very very generic right they did not give you something about the product so they just asked you a business scenario and in that business scenario so there are a couple of options so create a rule for a variation and add the rule to the common layer of the application so first of all to answer this question you should understand you should know about pegas situation layer kit what is pega situation layer kit anyone hello what is pega situation layer kit organization division on the that's a so it's a layered version right so you have yeah. something like a framework and an implementation kind of thing so what are all the things which are very generic should go into framework layer so that is uh, it can be like organization layer or a division layer or a work layer or an implementation layer right so there are different levels uh, there are different hierarchies basically so all the repeated things should go to the common layer if it is common across the organization it should go to organization layer if it is common across the division so those things have to go to division layer if it is very specific to implementation it has to be written in the implementation so that is called as pega situation layer kit so this this will give you as per your situation you have to club this into different levels all right so which layer you wanted to give this that level you have to go and you have to configure that now the question is there is a hr application and how do you configure a regional variation regional variation in the sense so if according to the location it has to differ your application has to change according to the local location so basically there is some variation assume that variation is some language so if you wanted to open the application in uh, china so the application language should be in chinese language assume that if you wanted to display in india it should be something in hindi if you wanted to display somewhere in us it should be in english so that's a regional variation right so how do you configure this so basically that regional variation should be specific to the region right so the application logic everything is same but the only that regional variation should differ according to the location all right so now read out the first option create a rule for the variation and add the rule to the common layer of the application do you think that this variation rule should be added to the common layer no it should not be added to the common layer because this is very something which is very specific to the location itself yes or no so as this is very specific to region so it has to be written specific to that particular as to do that particular location yes or no it should not be common so straight away it option a can be rejected now let's go to option b create a rule for the variation and replace the existing hr time of rule in the application common layer so now what it is saying is that so you have to create a rule and replace the existing hr time so see hr time of rule so this the basically the logic to write this particular application all right so this is hr time of rule do you think that you will replace that no you should not replace so all the common layers should be still there yes or no you cannot replace the main layer right the common layer with this particular variation just because of the variation you cannot completely remove the actual layer and you cannot replace it so definitely option b cannot be the answer now let's go to option c create a rule for the variation and add it to the secondary common application layer so primary layer secondary layer assume that there are two layers so primary layer is something where your hr uh, logics are written and this is something which is secondary common application layer so this is also common so as per your location it will modify this so we will we'll come back to option c later now we'll see option d create a rule for the variation add the rule to the layer for the reason so there is there any something which is very specific to layer for the reason you cannot do that so as per the regions you cannot split the layers so do you think that for india there is one layer for us there is another layer so reason two another layer reason three another layer do you think that situation layer cake will act like that no it's not that so it is based on completely on the reusability part of it if there is something which is very specific 
to different implementation that specific i mean that piece of code should be written in the common layer so based on the reusability these layers are divided not based on the regions so the best option within these four options is option c so create a rule for the variation and add it to the second common application layer so in this way you have to analyze the answers and you have to choose the best answer for that Hmm. What is? Hmm. First of all, did you understand the question? Let's forget about the answers for now. Did you understand the question first? Yes. Sir. Yes. Hmm. So, how do you know the primary common, secondary common? How can you understand so that, from the question? So that that is something that skill you should have. So, according to the question, so you should think something beyond the origins. So, this is how the questions are. So, the terminology is also very important. The way the questions are framed. So primary and secondary. So if you if you go to Pega situation layer cake and if you see the concept, there won't be anything like primary or secondary. They'll explain you about the layers, something like division layer, okay, organization layer and unit layers. Never they said something about secondary. So primary and secondary. So in that way, so basically you have to eliminate other options. So which one is the most best answer? You have to choose in that way. So your understanding of the question skills also matters here. How the questions are framed in the by using some uh, vocabulary, right? So vocabulary also plays an important role here. Though you have knowledge and pega, it doesn't mean that you can clear this. So understanding the question correctly matters. Okay. Because here A and C similarly, like most of the no, no, A and C are not similar. A and C are not similar. See, they are completely opposite. Create a rule for the variation, add the rule to the common layer of the application. Here they are saying add it to the secondary layer. Here they are saying common layer. As this is a regional variation, you cannot add it to the common layer, right? Common layer should be very generic. Something which should be same for across the regions. Those things should go in the common layer. This is something secondary. Okay. application right so there is nothing wrong in reading multiple number of times and within the time frame also you should analyze this question and answers anyways we'll continue let's go to second so it says uh, let me zoom more so here So they have given some uh, task. So accordingly, they have given application development studios. So you know, in Mega there are different types of uh, studios like App Studio, Dev Studio, Admin Studio, Prediction Studio. So basically, there are different types of portals. So they have given some scenario. So which scenario can be implemented in which portal? Is the question. So now tell me, what's the purpose of a Dev Studio? Hmm. You have seen Dev Studio, right? What is the purpose of Dev Studio? Hmm. Dev Studio is a place where you can write your business logic, right? Coming to Admin Studio. What is the purpose of Admin Studio? If you wanted to see your agents. So basically what an administrator can do, all these things can be there in Admin Studio. Coming to Prediction Studio. Prediction Studio is something where you can configure your prediction logics based on some scenario based on some data so if you wanted to predict something assume that you wanted to predict the status of a case so based on the previous data so if you wanted to analyze that so you can use predictions so there is a separate portal for that that is called as prediction studio coming to the app studio so once you create an application once you log into your application the default portal would be app studio right so now let's let's understand the task review real-time ui designs with the stakeholders so now assume that so there is uh the uh, 
a company has come or some stakeholders some some end users have come they wanted to achieve something in they wanted to take a pega for their implementing their you uh, application assume that the customer has come he wanted to implement his applications by using prpc so he is very much new to prpc so first time they are going to a pega company like pega systems and they wanted to understand first basically about pega so they wanted to have a look and feel of how this pega development process is all about how this how these people are doing all this pega development process so they just wanted to do that so on the first card so stakeholders basically so if they wanted to see any application so what pega will do is for that they have launched something called as express pega express so pega express is something so you can build your application simply uis and all those stuff you will not build your real applications so as per your requirement they'll just give you they'll design ui they'll design few simple logics and they'll show you because you are a customer right so i wanted you to come into pega so i wanted you to use pega tool for your application development process so for that for that purpose so basically for branding or for marketing purpose so they have launched something called as express so now they have brainstormed something and if you see the uh, versions from 7 to 8 right so most of the capabilities went into express now they have renamed express to app studio so from app studio itself you can build your applications they are making app studio more and more powerful so without opening the rule form itself you should be in a position to build your applications so that is the intention of the app studio okay so earlier or now they wanted to show something or if you wanted to brand pega so they'll use app studio and they'll showcase how the ui will look like how the development process in prpc will look like so they'll be creating some case they'll be adding few tasks they'll be creating some ui so all these things they'll do and they'll show you it doesn't mean that it's it's a real application no it is not a real application so it's a kind of uh, this is called as a dco process direct capture of objects whatever customer says this is my requirement immediately he will uh, he will implement that requirement and it will show you this is how your application might look like so now review real time ui designs with stakeholders so this is completely goes to app studio so now you have to draw drag this task and place this task beside the studio all right next monitor the cloud based production system at runtime so basically uh, you wanted to monitor the production system so how will you, who will monitor the application an administrator right so if you see in your in if you go to admin studio you can see the list of agents and other tasks which are being running on for that particular system so if you wanted to basically if you wanted to analyze the cloud based production system at runtime so it is admin studio all right now coming to third point configure the application security versioning and source control how to configure an application security versioning source control how will, how will you give the versions and all the stuff so it is via dev studio so this should go to dev studio portal next one globally configure the setting for an artificial intelligence model you are using some ai some prediction kind of things so directly this can be achieved using prediction studio so this is the answer for that okay so in the course in the pdm so they have they have given they have told about the portals so it is a one one pera they have given about each portal see they have from that small topic itself they have framed a question and they have asked you so during your preparation from the pdm so you have to concentrate each and every sentence of that particular course so they can frame a question from that sentence all right so don't just read like that so you should analyze each and every point in the pdm course so they can frame at any point from any small given sentence they can frame a question and they can ask you so you'll not know until unless if you see these kind of questions you you hardly remember those sentences but still you'll not get the complete idea so each and every topic you spend good amount of time every topic should be in detail you have to analyze so this is the intention 
so for that reason i have told you so for certification there is a separate uh, separate kind of plan that you need to have it is not just like you have to implement just to read and just forget no you have to read each and every point and you have to remember and you have to try to analyze the points So one more question on uh, situation layer cake. So hope you should answer this question. Okay. An organization has two lines of business. One is selling books for children and reselling college textbooks. So it has two things. One is they will sell uh, books for children. Assume that for school one to tenth class and reselling reselling college textbooks. Example eleventh to twelfth classes they are reselling the college textbooks this is the application that they have okay so the division selling books for children can use the same basic user interface as reselling the textbook with an exception of the payment methods so what here is so as they are selling the books right so the ui which is used to sell the books all right so it is written in the division the division selling books for children can use the same basic ui so both uh, for selling the books for children and reselling the college textbooks so the the ui which is used right it is same so which is there in which layer it is there in the division layer so there is an exception in that with the exception of payment methods so the payment methods are different but the ui that you are they are showing for both uh, selling books for children and reselling college textbooks it is the same ui but different payment methods so for children for selling the books for children it is a separate payment method and reselling college textbooks is a, a separate payment method so they have two different payment methods but the ui is same all right so how do you apply the situation layer cake in this scenario yes guys so analyze the options so do not get biased with the answer for this so just forget about the answer and just try to read the options and try to fit in the scenario so i'll read option a place the ui rules in the base layer and create a new layer for the payment rules for both the lines of business okay so here see here the division selling books for children so it is in the division layer selling books is in division layer but it says the place the ui rules in the base layer and create new layers so they are they are trying to create new layers for payment rules for both the lines of business this is option a let's go to option b place the ui rules in the base layer and create a parallel base layer for the payment rules so within the base layer itself they wanted to create another parallel base layer this is option b coming to option c place the ui rules and generic methods rules in the base layer and create a new layer for the division specific payment rules okay place the ui rules in the base layer and create new layer for the payment for each division So if you see the answer and tell me you should tell me why it is so and why not it is for other options also yes yes Murli. what is the answer out of these four options hmm? Karthik, I think the answer is C. Option is C. Yes, UI should be in the UI and other methods should be in the common for both the uh, line of business. So it should be in the base layer and okay. for coming for the payment payment method. So each uh, its line of business should have its own payment method 
like payment method is different for both line of business so it should be a different layer for its division mm -hmm. okay so it should be the uh, like payment of method specific to the division mm -hmm. specific to division or rule for each division for each division yep. okay. are any other answer yeah this is mulli uh, the presentation layer is i mean uh, the ul layer is same because both divisions are selling the books the only difference between these two layers is uh, payment method. So, payment method. So, what we can do is we can have the same presentation layer and uh, make add some rules in the um, logic uh, uh, rule layer or secondary layer. Okay. So now, where would you, you where would you feed this? Uh same ui the presentation layer in which layer see out of the organization division and unit layers where would you keep this okay. presentation layer in the base layer or in the division or unit organization layer, uh, division selling books for selling textbooks for exceptional in the okay in the three hierarchy what you're asking is three hierarchy one is organization layer and division layer and unit layer and I think in the organization layer, we are the same because the purpose of the requirement is the purpose is selling the book, uh, books. So, so in the organization layer, we can have the same uh, UI and in the division layer, we can add the, we can make the changes for payment method. Yeah. So it is in the division layer, we have to create specific payments because the payments are two different payments. So the yes. UI should be the common layer. That is the base layer. In the division layer, they should have specific two payments. So for this thing, there are two answers. There are two answers which are very close to these things. See here option C and option D. Option C is also saying place the UI rules and generic method rules in the base layer. Okay. So now and create a new layer for the division specific payment rules here also it says place the ui rules in the base layer and create a new layer for the payment rule for each division is it for each division or create a new layer for division specific payment rules see uh, in the option c the first part is same place the ui rules and generic method rules in the base layer here also place the UI rules in the base layer. The first portion of option C and option D are same. What matters is the second portion. Create new layer for the division specific payment rules. Create new layer for payment rule for each division. Out of these two options, now you tell me which is the most appropriate answer. See option A and option B can be ruled out, right? as you have rightly pointed that you have to keep the ui part in the base layer and division um, the payment should be in the division so as per that so c and d will suit the answer now out of c and d you have to choose one of the options which is very much close to the answer huh. tell me either c or d now let me check yes chandini can you tell me either C or D? I think it's D. Okay, explanation for that. I think division specific rule means there is a condition here. But as per the questions, payment rule should be should have it in both the each year division. So D is a appropriate answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, assume that this is the base layer. The base layer. This is division. 
division one for uh, selling children books right? school books this is division for selling uh, reselling college books okay now we have two things so these two things uses the ui rule the presentation layer same so that ui should go here right as ui same for both these things so i'm creating the base layer ui so this ui will be used here and the ui will be used here also okay now tell me the payment method the payment method create a new layer for the division specific payment rules now what he's saying is as per option c create a new layer create a new division layer something like this and payment and they wanted to use these two things selling children books and reselling college books so they wanted to use this payment is this a solution or create this payment method within this division each payment one and payment two this is fourth option the fourth option is creating payment methods in each division or the third option says that create a specific payment division and use this division now tell me did you understand the third option c option and d option difference between c and d c is creating a separate payment division option d is creating payment methods within each division so with this you should not create if it is very specific you should not create a new division so if it is very specific implementation you have to create that specific implementation in each division for each division you have to write your payment method so that is option d which is the correct answer all right shall i continue further fourth question yeah, Karthik. Okay. Yeah. So this answer is a straightforward. Uh, it's a straightforward question. So you should tell this. So I'll read the question carefully. Read. Uh, try to understand this. You are designing a form for an online bookstore to display new arrivals. So there is a book store. So new books, whichever comes right, you are showing. You are designing a form for that. In the form, the book cover pictures and displays in each book so for example one new book came so that book cover picture it will display in in a row so like words like words in a sentence so it is with sentence and it is showing the i mean the cover page also in the row once the row reaches the full width of the screen it wraps around to begin a new row All right so how which layout do you use to display the book cover pictures the book cover pictures what kind of layout that you use see the assume that there is a book that, that i mean there is a portal which displays the new arrivals new books so that new books portal what it will have you know so it will have the cover page every book will have a cover page right so that image that cover picture are displayed in the row they are displaying in the row okay so once the row reaches the full width of the screen the row reaches the full width of the screen it should wrap up into a new row automatically it should wrap up into a new row so this is your requirement so which layout you will use to configure this repeating layout mm -hmm. see here uh, why do you think it is a repeating layout? If you use repeating layout, what happens? If you wanted to display the same thing multiple number of times, then you have to use repeating layout. So it should automatically wrap up and it should adjust within the second line. Hmm. 
Yes. Think about it now. See, it is something like I'll I'll put it the same question in a different way. So there is a UI. If you access the UI in a smaller device like a mobile, in a me I mean medium range device like a tablet or something like that, and laptop and also a bigger screen. So if you display the UI, so it should auto adjust accordingly. The same thing was asked in a different way, right? We show yes. wrapping up to the yeah. next slide. Dynamic layout. It is dynamic layout. So let's see other options. So what is screen layout? What is column layout? What is the purpose of screen layout? Screen flows. We use the screen layout in in, in screen flows like so if you wanted to see all the, the breadcrumb view of all your assignments so it is a kind of a screen kind of a layout so now let's come to column layouts column layout means so within within the screen it divides your ui into multiple number of columns and dynamic layout and repeating layout so it is the dynamic layout which was introduced from Pega 7 onwards Earlier, we don't have any uh, layouts, dynamic layouts, till Pega 6. So it was recently come and it was launched from Pega 7. Dynamically, it will auto adjust its screen. All right, let's go. go ahead. This is also a bit tricky question, so you should understand this. See, the question is. An online sales application supports both laptop and mobile devices. So it's a sales application, so which is used for supporting for both laptops and mobile devices. Both the things are there. You are configuring the application skin and you notice the respect uh, responsive layouts in the mobile device and not displaying views as stakeholders require. So which two options allow you to resolve the situation without negatively impacting? the laptop users so so this application sales application both is used for supporting both labs laptops and mobile devices now you are trying to configure an application so the application basically skin application skin means how the ui of your application will look like and you notice responsive layouts in the mobile device and not displaying views in the as stakeholders require so what happens is like uh, if you are viewing uh, this mobile device so the responsive layouts in the sense so responsive means so it, it is properly displayed on one screen but it is not properly displayed on another screen it is not properly displayed say for example you are trying to access the same application on the mobile device it is not properly visible if you access the same application on a laptop it is properly visible so this is uh, so see here you notice the responsive layout in the mobile device and not displaying views as stakeholders require so stakeholders what they are trying to achieve right it is not properly displaying the way the stakeholders requires so now which two options allow you to resolve the situation without negatively impacting the laptop users okay so you, uh, there is an application which is being used by both laptop and mobile devices so in the mobile device there is some issue the ui is not rendering properly okay so now what things you will do such that so it should fix the mobile device problem without negatively impacting the laptop hmm. so you have to choose two options what are those so i'll repeat the questions uh, sorry options Use the same application skin in all portals. Do you think it is? If you use the same application skin, definitely they'll break. The same skin for 
both mobile device users and laptop device users no it will not work for that reason only we got the issue next update the process to give mobile users a separate portal so for mobile mobile users you give a separate portal for them okay next adjust the responsive behavior in the skin for optimal viewing in the mobile portal so responsive behavior and skill for optimal viewing the mobile portal okay do not use skin for the mobile application version Yes. Now you don't have an answer for this. So what thing you use? B and C. Yes, you will. Hmm? B and B C. B and C. Okay. Yes. Why? Why B and C? A and D are not apt for this. Okay. A use application. A state away rejected. Hmm. So D, do not use a skin for the mobile application version. You have to use some kind of application, a skin application, right? For mobile users. So in that way, you are rejecting and you are saying D and C. Okay, fine. So now can you tell me what is something? Can you give me supporting points for D and C? You have used an elimination process. As A and D are not appropriate answers, you have chosen B and C. Now tell me what why we have to use B and why we have to use C. So what is C? Option C. Adjust the responsive behavior in the skin for optimal viewing in the mobile portal. So basically in the skin rule, what they have is they have some responsive points, responsive behavior. So there are a few things. The thing is something like this. In the skin rule, if the screen width is uh, 5 centimeters, okay, and the column is something like this, 7 centimeters, 5 by 7, something like that. So so and so should be the width and so and so should be the column okay so if, if the screen that you are trying to display on this kind of device okay so this is the point that you have to take if you are viewing the same thing on a 14 inch screen so the responsive breakpoint should be something like this so so basically when the ui the ui right so as per the screen size they'll add some setting if this is the screen size this is my responsive behavior if this is if that is the screen size so it is this is my responsive behavior something like that so that are those things you can add in your skin rule so now you will try to adjust because mobile device right so if this is what the size is so accordingly you change the responsive behavior all right so you will make sure that the update process to your mobile uses a separate portal itself Let's continue. Yeah. This is another one. Okay, so question number six. A form listing nearby restaurant has columns. So someone is some searching some nearby restaurants. So the form will display these things. So it will display the name of the restaurant, restaurant location, thumbnail image of the sitting area, and make reservation checkbox. So when you click on nearby restaurants so it will display all these columns basically columns restaurant name is one column restaurant location is another column thumb image of the seating area is another column make reservation there is a checkbox if you wanted to make a reservation if there are multiple uh, restaurants so there is a checkbox once you click on that particular checkbox it will take you to the some example reservation screen assume that so basically how many columns are there there are four columns so restaurant name location thumb image of the sitting area make reservation now let's go ahead you want it so it says now the conditions you want to ensure that users have information they a reservation regardless of the screen size so irrespective of the screen size so this information should be provided 
reservation information okay next when viewed on a small screen you do not need to display the images when you are trying to view on a small screen so you need not to display that is an optional kind of thing so where are images are displayed thumbnail image of the sitting area this is the one of the columns is thumbnail image so this is a kind of optional for what optional for smaller devices got it so regard the reservation regardless of the screen size so what are the reservation things these are other things are rejected so make a reservation check box should be shown irrespective of the screen size you need to make sure that make a reservation is always there because so you should make sure whenever he wanted to book that so you should make sure that this reservation check box is always there irrespective of the screen size you can compromise on the thumbnail image but you cannot compromise on make reservation check box so no? you cannot do that right make reservation that is the place where you are attracting the customers if you wanted to reservation you you should not stop him not to make the reservation that is a kind of mandatory and if you take thumbnail image of the seating area so it should be optional now come to the answers importance so for every column there is something called as importance so you have to choose three set the importance of the restaurant name column to primary set the importance of make reservation column to primary set the importance of image column to secondary set importance of image reservation column to other set importance of restaurant location and make reservation columns to secondary set the importance of restaurant name and make reservation columns to primary tell me out of these three options which one you will choose see here uh, image is a second image is an optional one right so straight away you can enable this option c set the importance of image column to secondary secondary means so for smaller devices you are making it as secondary so that it is not a primary one so you can compromise on this particular image column so no as per this requirement so thumbnail image of the seating area is you can compromise on that part for small screens so for that reason you should set the importance of image column to secondary so one of the op options is c one of the options in the answer is c what else the year the restaurant name should be in the primary restaurant name column to primary yes next b D said the importance of make reservation column to primary. Okay. Yes. Yes. Said the importance of restaurant name, make reservation columns to primary. So C is there. C is always C is an answer for this. Okay. This is already. I wanted to have two more options. Okay. If I choose A and B, if I choose A and B, set the importance of restaurant name column to primary, make reservation column to primary. Then what about uh, what is another one? Location. What about location? Yeah, funny. Yeah. So A B, A B C is not the perfect answer for this. Any other combinations? is taken and i wanted to make sure yeah. restaurant name make reservation and restaurant location should be there so which other options will choose b and f b and f okay let's see b. c and d next Yes. Set the importance of restaurant name. Make reserve. Make reservation is duplicate, right? B has make reservation and F also has make reservation. Then what about location? Yes. 
let's take a and f that's the importance of restaurant name again restaurant name is repeated So we don't know the difference between the second tree and others. So forget about the yes. primary and second, the only two options. Anyways, C is taken as secondary. We can ignore D. E. Hmm? E. 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 And B. Right? B C E. B C E. A. A C E. This A C E. Answer is also A C E. Okay. So you can think about it. You can go offline and you can see the options. Go ahead. Yeah. So you want you want your application to have consistent styling across portals. So there are different types of portals for your application. So you have consistent styling. You want the background color of all buttons in your application to be blue. The background color of all your buttons, basically. So it should be in blue color. You wanted the background color of the buttons to be easily updated in case corporate branding changes. Easily updatable. You have to remember this. He, he wanted that application button should be the background color should be in blue color. And you want the background color of the buttons to be easily updated. If you want, you should be in a position to update it easily in case of corporate branding changes. Now, which attribute do you modify to set the background color? The control format, the application skin, button format, the tag. So here, uh, let me open. Yes, yes. Application skin. Application skin, button format, background mixing, control format. So let me open uh, the button configuration and all those stuff. For that so generally uh, when you configure a button where will you configure a button button will be configured in a section rule right so once you drag and drop a button so it will add into your section so that button control will have a format that format is called as button format all right so see this button format and the control formats so in the button format it is actually a drop down so from the button format you can have n number of formats say for example there is a format called as So button is a control right so from the section you will drag and drop so in this button there is something called as format you can configure a format so assume that this is format blue format red format some yellow something like this you can configure different formats All right so there are different type of formats for button there is you can choose any one of these formats all right so they're asking button format 
or the format here button format the control format background mixing and application scheme so where will you define this uh, format red so these things you will define it in skin skin of the application so for the skin of the application so you have to define format red means so go and choose red color format yellow means go and choose yellow color something like this you can choose that in your application skin and there is something called as uh, button format background mixing so background mixing background mixing means within the skin itself there is something called as background so background means mixing means so if you are con trying to configure a format so it is not only the background color right so there might be the, the font of the text also on the button so there are different things in the format what should be my background color what should be my front end color what should be my font size within the text so all these things are three different things okay so there is something called as background also because here the background color they are asking right so background mixing. Okay. now these four options they have given now which one you will choose see here the requirement is you want the background color of the button to be easily updated in the case of corporate branding changes Applications here or control format or button format or background mixing. Basically, these are the options. You have button, button will have a format where you can choose a format from here. Okay, let's go one by one option. Okay. Uh, the control format. This is the format. So you will you think do you think that this you'll go to blue and so there is a format called as format blue also do you think that you'll go to this format and you'll change from blue to red in case if if the corporate want if the company wants to change the color from blue to red do you think that you will go and you'll create format from blue to red you will update this instead of choosing blue you do you think that you'll choose red is this the easy way that is option a now let's take application skin in the application skin you you can only add background mixing but you cannot define the color in it okay so button format so button format means this one so button format means so now you'll go now if they ask for red format red, something like this you will choose so they want to have hello hello something like this this is one thing and background mixing background mixing means whether you will go and you will change in the mixing rule from red to hello something like that so out of these four options which one you will choose which is easy for me c sorry d option d why option d mixing is the place where you define the background color okay if you change the mixing to change the mixing what happens from blue to red so wherever this is used this can be updated right so now whatever the format that you're using so all the buttons will change from blue to red okay this is one way and see here if i come to button format if i change it from red to yellow or red to like this so all the buttons could be displaying something like this So out of these two things, which is easy. Button format. Hello. It is button format. And you can contradict also. Either with option C and option D. 
to say that option D is transferred to say that button format is also as for Pega systems, this is option C is the correct answer. Button format. Okay. So oh, this is very easy. So question eight is what are the minimum components of a user interface action set? Hmm? Option B. Option B. Option C. One action, one event, and one condition. Option C. One action and one event. But we can put a when condition also, right? Mm -hmm. You can also, but they are asking what are the minimum components. Also, is an additional thing. I understood. If you want, you can keep it. But is it mandatory? Others. So let's take first option: two actions and one event. That is the minimum components. Two actions. Do I need to mandatorily keep minimum two comp two actions? If I wanted to make a user interface as an action set, no, right? One action is enough. We know to have two actions. All right? One action. When we do trigger this action based on event, right? Say, for example, on click. Say, for example, on button click, I wanted to run a data transform in the background. I'll assume that. Okay. So, what will you do? You'll go to that button, you'll go to actions, you will use one event basically first you can use multiple events also if you wanted to do the same thing on hover on single click or on double click you can do multiple events also but minimum things are one event is enough right on click assume that this is the minimum event one click one one uh one event plus one action you have to use one action what kind of action that you wanted to take on that particular event okay so it is one action and one event one condition it is not mandatory it is not mandatory that you have to use condition just say refresh everyone Go ahead. Yeah. So this seems like this is also easy. The reservation process allow customers to reserve a flight, hotel room, and rental cars as a part of travel itinerary. Okay. So so they so basically there is a reservation process where customers what they can do is they can reserve a flight hotel room and they can take a, a car for rent also as a part of travel itinerary so there is some ui assume that it's a form so in that travel itinerary so these things are there uh, finding reserving these three options flight reserve a flight hotel room and rent a car so which configuration displays the checkbox to allow users to select travel insurance only if the itinerary includes a flight in the sense so there are you can make three reservations what are those you can have flight booking you can have hotel room booking and you can also take rental car so out of these three things there is one more thing that thing is insurance travel insurance so th that travel insurance is a checkbox basically that is a checkbox if you wanted to have insurance you can check that checkbox so this checkbox is based on a condition so
so that is you should if only if, if you take flight then only that checkbox should be displayed otherwise it is not displayed this is the question basically so you can have booking for flight for the flight hotel room and rental say for example you have only booked for hotel room but not for the flight so this option should not be allowed which one selecting the insurance travel insurance is not allowed now how will you configure this question so a declare expression configure for forward chaining a visible when condition applied to the checkbox a valid rule applied to the flow action an action set applied to the checkbox mm -hmm. tell me now B. B. Yeah. Visible when condition applied to the checkbox. Others. B. Okay. So why not if? He is not calculating any value. Basically, we are not actually calculating any value. Right. Option A can be removed up. So let's go to see a valid rule applied or to the action. So they are not giving any validation rules here, basically. So we are not actually validating any user input. So no violation rule is required. Option B, an action set applied to the checkbox. So action set. So now action set is something. Once you click on the checkbox, what type of action that you wanted to take? So which is not a appropriate appropriate scenario for question 9 so it is option b a visible a visible when condition applied to the checkbox so pretty straightforward that option is so you are implementing a ui form for collecting job applicants information user must provide a values to certain fields before Submitting the form, which configuration adds asterisk to indicate the mandatory fields on the form. So this is also very simple. So basically, you know, a job applicant who is looking for a job. So there is a UI form. So in that form, so there are certain fields which are uh, mandatory. So those mandatory options should be displayed with what? Should be displayed with a star symbol, a red star symbol, which is meaning that so these options, these fields are mandatory fields. So now I'll repeat the uh, options. Use a validate rule to verify the mandatory fields have a value or not. Use multiple validate rules for each mandatory field. Configure the mandatory fields as required in the section rule. Use an edit validate rule to verify if each of the mandatory properties has a value. See, basically you can implement with all these four options. What is the answer? Anyone? Option B. Option C. B. Option B. No, Option C. Option C. Configure the mandatory fields as required in the section room. Okay. Why, why not A? Use a validate rule to verify mandatory fields have a value or not. You are trying to create a validate rule. So, in that validate rule, you are trying to check basically whether the fields are mandatory or not why can't i use option a uh, option a is you, we need to verify it but option c is it's a, it's making mandatory that is also mandatory only you are also validating whether it is mandatory or not Sir, out of box, so there is a required configuration. Hmm. Yeah, I understand. On the field, you have an option called as if you open the control of the field, so there is an option mandatory. Is it required or not? Yes, you can do that. So you can enable that also. You can also do it from the valid rule. Why you are choosing it from the field? Option. I think in the, question, uh, in the question, they are not asking about the validation, they are asking about only just. Uh, 
the form uh, US are mandatory. Mm, so that star star symbol is mandatory here. So they are also asking two things: user must provide value to certain before fields before submitting the form. So this is a basic condition. Before submitting the form, form they should make sure that certain fields are already given. Okay, this is one one requirement. Other requirement: which configuration adds asterisk to indicate the mandatory field on the form? So which configuration adds an asterisk? So if you use option A. If you take a valid rule, it will. Do you think it will add a, a star symbol? No, it will validate whether it is mandatory or not. But it will not give you that UI representation of adding a star. So for that reason, it is configure the mandatory fields as required in the section rule. If you configure this, it will show you the star symbol on the field. Okay. So see how they are twisting the question. What this? How they are twisting the question? The same thing. See, if you take all the options, all the options are very much close to the answer. Okay. Go to option. Option one. Oh. So here. A bookseller maintains a database of more than 10,000 book titles. So now you have been asked to configure a form that allow user to select a book title. So how do you configure the form? Hmm. So basically, what you are trying. So in the database, there are 10,000 book titles. Okay. So you have been asked to configure a form that allow that allows user to select a book title. So assume that there is a box where you have to select a book title from the list of entries. That entries are 10,000 book titles are already there in the system. How do you configure this form? Add a drop down control and it sorts the data from the property values value used in the control. So what he is suggesting is use a drop down control. So the source of this particular drop down control is the the values which are configured on the property rule form. Do you think that on the property rule form, can you add this 10,000 book titles? Hmm? Hello. You, you got no. a question first? It is not possible. Yes. Basically, 10,000 book titles. You have to go to uh, property rule form. Use something called as local list or prompt value, something like that. You cannot 10,000 book titles. No, you, you cannot do that. So option A is gone. Now let's take option B. A drop-down control and source the data using a data page. Okay. So data using a data page for these kind of options is okay. Now let's see other options also. Add an autocomplete control and source the data using a data page. Option C also looks closer to the answer. Option B and C both. Option D. Add an autocomplete control and source the data from the clipboard work page. Do you see any disadvantages in using D option D? No. Uh, in D, uh, if if you want to add the data in the clipboard page, that means you have to read all the ten thousand record and you have to put the data in the clipboard page, which is that that means it is not advisable to uh, keep ten thousand data in the clipboard page. Okay. So D right. option is not the good option. Right. You can do it, but so that is not the good option. So then what about B and C? Which is the best answer? C is the, C is the best answer is what you are saying. Why, why not B? Because, uh, because 10,000 books mean mm -hmm. if we give some name, then only it will show the names. Autocomplete drop-down is the best. Okay. If it is a drop-down, 
once you click on a drop down what happens it has to list list a register of 10000 book titles so what will happen to the list so do you think that in the screen size with the screen size drop down will show the list of all 10000 book titles no it is not possible so it should be an auto complete auto complete too. so once you enter something accordingly it will search and it will display the best results so option c is the answer Agree, others. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. An online car parts business wants customer to find parts easy. Okay. So you are asked to implement the following requirement. Customer select, must select a make, model, and year to initiate the vehicle specific search. So basically, so what uh, an online car parts business wants the customer to find the parts easily. Basically, so according to the see based on the model, make year, and make model and year based on these three parameters. If you search with that, so that he will go and he will get. Initiate a vehicle specific search so that he will find the uh, parts very easy. How do you configure the data store storage in the application to implement the requirement? Hmm. So what are the options you have? Customer must select. Model. Customer select a make. Model and year. To initiate vital specific search. Yes. Options. Configure a data page to store the make, model, and year data. Configure a connection to a system of records using external database mapping. Configure a local data storage of the make, model, year of the vehicle. Configure a static list of make, model, and year of vehicles. Yes. See, with these four options, you can do it. But how would you configure the data storage in the application to implement the requirement? E, option C. Options. See why not A? Configure a data page to store the make model and year. So by using a data page, is it to store or is it to retrieve? It is to retrieve. Right. So option A is called. Configure a connection of system of records using external database mapping. Okay, can be an answer. Configure a local data storage to make the make year, model, and year of the vehicle. So you need to have a local storage where you can maintain all these things. Configure static list. So to make model and year of the vehicle. So see why do you keep it as an external system? So he's saying that configure the in the application within the application to implement this requirement. Why do you want it to have an external system? No, you will not do that. So external configure a system of record for external database mapping no you don't want it to have it in a separate table and why to get it in again to map to that particular table no option b is gone configure local data storage the make model and year of the vehicle so out of these four options option c is closer to the answer <clears throat> so option d configure a static list of make model and year vehicles So, which is not proper. So, what is the static, static list? Static list in the sense like prompt list. Is it something like prompt list or like something other? Ah, something like that. Yes. Something on the property rule form, right? So, something like that. Local list. Please. It should be a different, definitely should be a local data storage. Data storage in the sense, a table. 
Let's go ahead. Yeah. A hotel booking application allows customer to change rooms after making a reservation. So once you make a reservation, it will application allows customer to change the rooms. The status of each room in each hotel is stored on a data page source from a database table. So whether so if you wanted to change to another room after your reservation. So what is the status of each room? So whether it is available already occupied not available not good bad something like that. Basically the status of each room hotel. So hotel is stored in a data page source from a database. So the status is there in the database which is actually in the is from a database table. Now, how which two configuration options do you use to update the database table when a customer changes the room? When customer changes the room, so what should happen? So say for example, he has booked room one initially. Now he came, he wanted to change that room one. Now he wanted to update, uh, he wanted to, he has changed, assume that he has changed from room one to room two. Now what should be the status of room one? Status of room one should be empty and status of room two should be occupied. Right. So now the status should be updated. The database as it is sourced from the database. So the table has the changes, but the data, the database doesn't have the changes. What the requirement? Yes. So app, uh, which two configuration options do you have to choose two? A when rule to trigger the database update. Okay. An editable data page containing the room information. A data transform to copy update copy updates to the data page. A saveable database containing the room information. Which two options? B and D. B and D. D. A saveable database containing the room information. Why? Why a saveable database? So, uh, people might be using the different pages. So, if I'm on a uh, room page, so I can change the uh, uh, reservation. So automatically it will refresh and it will say the latest change. So for that for that reason, you are using a editable database containing the room information. So if you want yeah. to update the data page, so it should be editable data page. Fine, that is fine. Why a saveable data page? See, initially the database will be saved, not the data page. See, whatever the changes which are there in the database, the data page should reflect those changes. So, no. Yes, yes, correct. So BC. So a data transform to copy yeah. updates to the data page. It is B and yeah. C. Cut. Yeah. Others. Okay, let's eliminate a when rule to trigger the database update. No, not required. Why do you require a database to update? So once you make the changes automatically, you should configure in such a way that the database should be get updated. Okay. So now the database save should reflect the change data page. Okay. So an editable data page. So basically the database should be an editable because normal databases you need not to update it because again every time they refreshes. It's not that you should refresh the database. You have to take an editable database where the status should be get updated. So if you wanted to update the database, you have to use a data transform. The data transform to copy updates to the database. B and C. Okay. Let's go ahead. So it looks like a data page question. So the question is a door manufacturer offers a finite list of colors on all its doors. As a part of the order, customer can select the color of the door. 
select the database definition configuration settings to source a color drop down list to minimize memory usage okay so what is happening see there is a there is a portal so in that portal so you can choose you can basically you can select the door and also you can select the color of the door also okay. so he has some finite list of colors assume that there are 100 colors so if you can choose red color black color green color something like that all right so basically so as a part of the order customer can select the color of the order now so what is happening in, in the sense select the data page definition configuration settings to source the color drop down list in the minimum memory usage so basically when you are trying to select a color right so the source of this uh, in assume that it is a drop down so once it is a drop down you have to sort this drop down right so this drop down source is from a data page yes by using a data page so they are sourcing this particular drop down so now the question is so now tell me the data page definition what type of data page what is the configuration of the data page so that the usage of the memory is very minimal right so now see here So the structure should be what? Is it a single page or list? It should be a list because it is fetching multiple colors. Page means single page, one page. So list means multiple. So definitely it should be multiple colors. Object type. So now object type, so out of these things, work order, work color, feedback, something like this. So at me product data colors. So colors is something which is, so it's a data layer. It is coming from the data layer. So there is a, a color class. So option one is the option C out of object types. So there are three options. The first option is the appropriate selection. Edit mode. Now tell me guys, is it uh, read only, editable or saveable? Is it read only or editable or saveable? Read only. Read only. We are just choosing the colors. We are not doing any manipulations on that particular data page. Right? It is read only. Scope is what? Uh, now tell me what is the scope. See, there are three scopes. Red means a single, uh, if it is like an instance based one request. If the same user uh, raise multiple requests, so the thread means it is per request, it is one database. If it is the user means, if it is request all. If it is across the server means, it is both. Request all. Why request all? It's a user base. So if I'm accessing, I need different color. Someone else is accessing, someone needs a different color. If the same person is using multiple uh, multiple requests to say for example i am a user i wanted to have multiple requests multiple requests on the same page no right hmm. so is it on same request or same requester a requester can make multiple requests yeah yeah um, request not request uh, request so request means thread. Okay. Okay. These are the options. Let's go. You are configuring an external data source using integration designer. So you have REST, DEF, stage, and endpoint URLs. Okay. So now, uh, and a name of the data source. So what are the other information do you need to configure an external data source? Let's see. REST is the connection which is used here. 
so you know that in integration there are different types of things like rest to soap and multiple things so here uh, you are configuring external data storage using the integration designer right so now you have the rest dev stage production endpoint urls and the name of the data source so what other information do you need to configure the external data source so backend url in the configured wl refuses to connect the name of the database where the source data is stored plan for mapping the data and rest response fields the data view using external data source Not this one. so mapping rules so if you use uh, soap so what is the mapping field pass xml and xml stream rules right so you need to have the the conversion the mapping rules so this c option c is the answer the star are already there in here It's already 843. Okay. Yeah. okay, so uh, guys, sixth, listen carefully. So, data page holds product information and has a reload if older than field set to 30 minutes. So, the data page is created at 743. The user then performs the following actions. At 8.10, the user refreshes the product information. At 8.45, the user refreshes the product information. At what time the data page is reloaded? So there is an, something called as, so there is a data page. So that data page holds information, some product related information. Okay, so here the refresh strategy. The refresh strategy is 30 minutes. So this 30 minutes means so every 30 minutes go and get the latest copy. The refresh strategy. So it is given in reload if older than. Okay. Just be on mute, please. Thanks. So now uh, the refresh the, the refresh strategy is 30 minutes of is the configuration which is there on the data page. So now the data page is created by the user at what time? 7:43 is the time then user performs the following actions so 743 was the page was created in the clipboard now at 8 10 the user refers the product information so 743 8 10 so what is the refresh strategy 30 minutes all right so 845 the user refers the product information so there are two things 8 10 and 8 45 he refreshes the product information refreshes means so he's trying to access that product information okay so now at what time the data page is reloaded so basically at what point of time the data page the source it will go to the source and get the latest copy is the question so wait then do you think that at eight time the data page will go back to the uh, database and will get the data from its uh, source you can unmute then you can speak yeah. no option d 813 okay. No. We'll, see. we'll go with option B. Okay. So tell me whether is it 810 is the correct answer or not? No. No. No, it is not. No. Because 743 and 810. How many minutes? It is 27 minutes, right? 27. 27 minutes. So with a, which is falling below 30 minutes. All right. So definitely at 810 it will not refresh. Now let's take 845. 845. What's the difference? 743. Here's 17 minutes plus 45 minutes. It is almost one hour, two minutes. After one hour, two minutes, basically at 845, the user refresh the product information, right? So at this point of time, so the data page is reloaded. Option B is the second option. Now let's go to C840. So 840, 840, user hasn't done anything, right? User hasn't done anything at 840, right? 840. Now let's take 813. So 813 means 
exactly uh, 30 minutes from 743, right? 743, if you add 30 minutes, it will come to 813. Now tell me which is the answer. So option A and option C are not there. So they are irrelevant. Now the, the answer is uh, between D option and D. D. Option D. Okay. Why option D? 43 the data page is created so the data page has to get refreshed after 30 minutes so it is 8 13. 8 13 okay any other answers option so just add 30 minutes to a 43 will give 8 13 okay so um, karthik if at 8 10 if you, there is no uh refresh uh, on the product information then 845 is the correct answer those at 810 user did some action that's the only reason after 30 minutes uh, the page will be refreshed mm -hmm. see uh, okay so it is not based on the refresh it is based on the creation right yeah Chris. See, you see at 810 if 810 so he has refreshed it so which is nothing but it is 27 minutes so the page is not refreshed the page is not refreshed so the created time is still 743 only understand this though it is 8 10 so the page did not get refreshed because it is 27 minutes which is less than 30 minutes so it is not refreshed but it was created at 743 but the reload is 30 minutes okay so now assume that 743 plus 30 minutes what is the time 8 13 right at 8 13 now tell me guys do you think that the data page will refresh hmm. yes or no you tell me no no is the answer why why chandini why no i have given 30 minutes as my refresh strategy right if the product information is changed only then it will reload otherwise it will not reload see the product information is done at 8 45. so ideally what should happen 8 30 it should refresh right so basically what are the conditions Based on what conditions it will refresh is the question. The one thing is reload is there 30 minutes. Do you think that it that is the only condition it will go and it will refresh? No, it is not the only condition. So if it is if 30 minutes is the only condition, ideally it should go at 8:13 and it has to refresh itself at 8:13. No, that is not the only condition. There are two conditions. One is uh, this refresh strategy, and next one is user should access the data page. Then only it will reload two things have to meet if it wants to reload it from its source two things one is it should be see it is reload if older than 30 minutes it is not exactly after 30 minutes you are getting something here so reload if it is older than 30 minutes is what the option it is not reload exactly after 30 minutes it is not like so 30 minutes should cross is one criteria and user has to access it user should access the data page then only when these two conditions are met then it will go and get the data from the source that is at 845 user is trying to refresh the product information at 845 845 this one condition is met and it is it is older than 30 minutes also both the things are satisfied so for that reason it is 845 is the option you got this or not understood or not first yes one thing karthik at 810 the user is refreshing the product so if it is not doing at 810 so then the answer will be 813 see it 810 he is refreshing he is accessing the data page but at what time it was created do you think that 810, 810 it was created or it was reusing the existing one reusing the existing one it is reusing the existing one 
but when was that created that existing one it was 743 so it is based on the creation time not on the last access time Which source do you select for a database that contains the details of a single record for a data type? Hmm? Look up. Look, there are options connect, uh, report definition, data transform, and look up. So, this is a data page. So, in the data page, basically, so you are trying to get only a single record. So, you see. Connector. Connector means it's like an activity only. Connector means basically it is going and getting from a, a different storage. Report definition, you know, it is used to fetch multiple records from the table. Data transform. Data transform also it's a property set operation. So lookup will make sure it is getting a single record from the data page. It is lookup. So it looks like we are already fetching 853. Any other questions you have before I wind up? So we'll have these kind of sessions more and more. Okay. So any other questions we'll wind up for today. Any specific questions on certifications you have, you can ask me now. So basically, you might have got some idea how the questions will look like in certifications, right? Yes, Karthik. Yeah, Karthik. So let me know, guys, uh, if you need any other help, like a uh, proxy kind of help also. So don't think that this is the only way. Okay. So if you have any proxy also, let me know. Proxy means? You are taking some other person help and you are trying to so they 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 charge something they'll charge some money and they will make you certified okay yeah thank you yeah thank you Sophie.